Hey, welcome to This Week on Let's Fix Her Up. <laughs> I am your host, Mike Janus, and I'm here with Patricia. Hello. You are going to learn a lot about this lady over the next few shows, <laughs> and uh, we're sitting in her beautiful kitchen right now. We're going to uh, showcase it <laughs> here in a little bit, and uh, and Patricia, I'm doing some work for you, so uh, kind of... An, uh, an idea of all of the great things that you've done in this house over mm -hmm. the years. And uh, so so we're doing that. And the more I was doing, I said, you know what? I've got to get you on Let's Fix Her Up. Got to get you on this. <laughs> well, so whatever. we got all our video shot for here. We're going to show you little bits and pieces of it over the next few weeks. And we're going to be in the kitchen this week. And uh, we're also going to be, I, I have a real upsetting problem with the water department in my city over there in Rossford. Our water bills are just beyond unbelief. And we are mm. going to show you how to fix a toilet that might be leaking right now because a hundred dollar a month uh, water bill for a small house is just what we're seeing right now. So we're going to showcase uh -huh. that. It, it, it is kind of crazy. And of course, we'll be out with uh, Steve Naylor finishing up our job that we did out on the roofing uh, job. <laughs> it's just absolutely gorgeous. Got some beautiful footage of that. So we got a big show and uh, stick around. You're going to enjoy it. Folks, you're here with Mr. Steve Naylor. How you doing, buddy? Super. I gotta apologize to you. I've I kind of went AWOL here for the last couple of weeks. And well, I was out of town for a little bit myself, and uh, um, so your apologies accepted. I got I didn't even say we were gonna talk about this, but you had a major crazy thing over there in Dayton uh, with softball, with with people getting yeah, you know, ugly stuff. Yeah, huh? it really was. You know, we've been talking about the travel softball and different things on your other program, and uh, we did have quite an experience uh, with a, a little shooting altercation in our hotel. Uh, oh my goodness! All the kids were okay. The most importantly, and um, we uh, we ended up moving to another hotel. But uh, yeah, we played it was, good softball. Oh, we played great softball. Yeah, so, we're yeah. we're gonna have Steve on here in a couple of weeks on our our sports show that we're gonna be doing at eight thirty on Saturday nights, just talking about kids in sports and you know to keep them active all throughout the uh the summertime here but speaking of active this house uh you guys did this uh, a few weeks ago here yeah. just a beautiful job and i know the uh, christie family is really happy with what you're able to do yeah it turned out really nice um you know they had some definite uh, flashing issues and some issues around their uh their uh their soil stacks and stuff and we took care of everything it was a complete tear off and uh, the shingles are all back down and sealed real nice and um, turned out to be a great job got it all cleaned up really nice and you know it, it took us just a little over a day to do the job so. well we you know we shot footage back then with all of the tear off and everything and that's the thing i think that scares a lot of people it's like oh my gosh my roof is going to be unprotected for x amount of time and how do you go get through that you know uh, First and foremost, we keep a really, really close eye on the weather. Sure. And if there's a greater than 30% chance of, of it raining, you know, typically we're not going to tear off. Right. Unless we've got a garage we can do or something off to the side that everything, you know, just kind of ties into itself and we can, we can protect it. Um, so uh, we, were, we were blessed with great weather when we did yeah. the job. Um, yeah. And uh, we, we, we got in and out. And we do not tear off more than we can re-shingle back in that very same day. So we're just, we're just real careful about what we do. Well, yeah. speaking of careful, and this is one of the things, you know, you see these, these uh, uh, A, 5A's roofing companies, you sure. know, they come out here and everything. Sure. And, you know, I feel so bad for some of these guys that are up on the roof and everything because I'm falling off two roofs, <laughs> okay? Now, the safety that you guys put into when you have your guys up there, yeah. I think that is just, it's just awesome for what you guys are able to do. Yeah, um, safety is first and foremost. Um, we try to comply with everything that OSHA, you know, after you get over five feet tall, we just try and comply with absolutely everything we can. Um, no matter how fast you can get a job done or how beautiful it looks, you know, at the end of the day, if your guys aren't going home safe, nothing really matters, you know. So we really, we want to do a great job for you. It doesn't have to be done in one day. We don't have to rush through anything. 
and um, you know, with you know, setting up for safety is just it's it's crucial with Seagate. Sure, um, sure. And and most other companies don't do it. You know, they just they, they take their chances. No, it's a roll of the dice. Um, it's a roll of the dice if the guys are even insurable that are up on your roof. Um, but we do have a two million dollar insurance policy, um, and uh, our guys are you know under compliance at all times. This is uh, this is this was kind of uh, the secondary room. I, I know there's things that uh, we've talked about. And, hey, and Giacomo, our cameraman, just kind of giving I a little shootout to that great flashing work there. I mean, it's it's just it's so clean and everything looks good. So one of the things we had to do here is this is was an addition to the home, and it tied in uh, to the home, tied right into the side walls. And whenever you uh, come to a you know a side wall like that it has to be flashed with l-shaped metal it's called step flashing and it's sure. overlapped and then counter flashing on the top of that a lot of companies will when you see in their quote where it says we're going to seal this or seal that most of the time what they're really talking about is just putting a bead of caulk or actually using like a tar right which is something that we do not do okay. anything that can be flashed properly can be done with rubberized materials or metal uh, depending on what, what uh, circumstances you have in the field. but um, So a counter flashing and a step flashing is what this called for. And that's again, that's what we did around the chimney. Um, you'll, uh, you'll see that the, 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 the step flashing, the counter flashing is cut right into the brick. And um, it works a lot better. Uh, it, it's the yeah. only way to do it. It's the old school way to do it. When, whenever you see anybody spreading tar or saying they're going to seal something, just be yeah. leery of that. It's um, not the proper way to do it. And last thing before we let you go, because I know you're crazy busy today. We are right now. Yeah. I know we've got in the next couple of weeks, you've got some uh, basement uh, work that you're going to be doing waterproofing. Yeah, we're going to go through one start to finish. I'm going I'm I'm to pick one out. That. Yeah. That'll be a good yeah. one. Now, now, before we let you go here, uh, the warranties on these roofs now, I mean, it, I, I mean, it's a different number than it was 10 years ago. Absolutely. We actually have the best warranty in the shingle business. Owens Corning actually backs up our labor um, and the material, and they also come out and randomly inspect our jobs. Fantastic. So we don't know which ones they're going to uh, come out and inspect, but they'll, they'll come out, they'll get up on the roof, they check our flashings, they check our nailing patterns, they make sure the shingles were installed properly, they look for the proper underlayments, and they do this all randomly. So we can't do one job better than the other. Sure. We have to do every job the same. And, um, and it's, it's the absolute best warranty in the shingle industry. So it's a, it's, it's a great, great, you have to be a platinum preferred contractor uh, through Owens Corning. So um, That's a good thing. Oh, it's a good Well, yeah. that's why you've been with warranty. us since day one. That's I, right. I, I have never talked to another roofing company. And, and, and I'm, I'm excited to do some of this waterproofing stuff because obviously we've had a lot of water. Yeah, we've got, we've got plenty of jobs going on. Um, going to find one for you that uh, that uh, we can learn a lot about on on it. Yeah, huh? yeah, absolutely. Going to find one for you real soon. Steven, thank you, sir. Yeah. Talk to you soon. Seagate Roofing, boy, I'll tell you what, they uh, they get it done and uh, Seagate for your home because that's it yeah. for your home. Yeah. You can do it. Yep. Thank you, sir. As your roof past its peak, it's not always this easy to tell. From rooftops to foundations, Seagate is a trusted A-plus BBB accredited business and a Platinum Preferred Contractor. As a Platinum Preferred Contractor, we offer one of the country's best roofing warranties, the Owens Corning True Protection 50-Year Warranty. That's material and labor. We've earned your trust for over 30 years, Toledo. Call Seagate now. Do you ever drive around the neighborhoods just to look at the houses? I like spotting the ones that have been around the longest because they remind me of the amazing legacy I'm part of. Hi, I'm Marty Sutter, president of Genoa Bank. For over 110 years, our bank has helped families buy and build their homes. And all that time, one thing hasn't changed. At Genoa Bank, we believe that when we put the mortgage needs first, the rest takes care of itself. Genoa Bank, taking your banking needs personally.
Well, folks, you know, one of the things about this show is uh, being able to showcase great projects that people in the Toledo and Northwestern Ohio area do. And we're here with uh, Patricia Marmony. And uh, Patricia, you're amazing. Well, thank you. You are just <laughs> amazing. And over the next few weeks, uh, we're going to start spotlighting projects that you're going to be doing at your house. And uh, boy, we're starting off with a doozy here. Uh, this is just incredible. You've actually been able to take this house and uh, you actually built this house with your with your husband who passed away. Yeah. But the two of you together just, I, I'm going to tell you, you made history here. And uh, I, 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 the, the stuff that you've done to this house, I mean, how do you get the ideas to put this together? Is it just... I have creativity that just oozes from my pores. There you go. That's, see, that's <laughs> I have what we to do stuff. <laughs> if it's not take here, my show, it's, it's over. It's, uh, <laughs> it's somewhere else. <laughs> but it's just a lot of ideas come out, and you know, you look at a piece and you think, what can I do with this? And right? so then, you know, I come up with three, four different ideas and take what's the best. And you've actually yeah. taken this house. You, you guys built this house from the ground up. Yeah. And you know, the funny thing is, if if you think about it, this house is actually like. Uh, it, it, it's a steel house. It's an actual yeah. steel house till you walk inside. Yeah. Uh, it, it just, it takes your breath away. Thank you. And, and what we're going to do over the next few weeks, you're not going to see me. You don't need me. You don't need me. We actually did a walkthrough on this house and uh, spent the last couple of hours and there's just so many things and each week we're going to have a little bit different that we're going to do, but uh, you're going to be blown away by this. And Patricia, what, what was your favorite room in the house to, to work on? To work on was probably the sunroom, okay. because it's it's the one that I actually helped with the concrete and in the tile laying and and I had a lot of a lot more hands on there with the construction than anywhere. It also turns out to be my favorite colors out there, and the teal and the the rust color. And, <laughs> and you're the kind of person that can go find a sink for ten dollars or. Uh, cabinetry for somebody's front yard that or you're, you're able to find these and go to the garage sales and to the estate sales and things like that and you turn them into masterpieces you just do well you know you can find anything on YouTube on mm -hmm. how to or in a book and so we did educate ourselves a lot on those different items I taught myself how to tile I taught myself about concrete I have four or five books on how to do concrete she does, and um, she knows I have four it. or five books on how to do tile. And, you know, if you want to learn how to do something and you don't have a lot of money, then you can, you can learn how to do it. There's resources out there. My husband was an industrial electrician, and he watched a lot of the guys on the job to learn about the carpentry, the plumbing. He asked. Um, he got a lot of tips. His father was a tile layer. He was mm -hmm. on the phone to him all the time from Germany. So there are resources, and if you if you have the energy to do it, and um, you're willing to do it in the imagination, you can do whatever you want. The uh, sky's the limit. I am just so excited for all we're going to do, and <laughs> basically, you're not going to see me on any of these things. We're going to start here in the kitchen, and uh, uh, just she did a wonderful job explaining what this all did and how how she was able to save money to put this together. I mean. You probably got a dollar or two into this, but still, yeah. the, the amount of money you saved is, is just beyond belief. And you're going to help me with my kitchen, I hope. I hope, I hope. I, I mean, <laughs> I'd you, be happy to help you. Yeah. Got, you got to have fun. money. It's yep. fun to me. Yep. And tile doesn't have to match. Cabinets don't have to match. And that's no. what you proved in this kitchen. Right. The idea was to repeat each item. Like I have copper, brass, wrought iron, stainless steel, but it's a repetition that flows and mm -hmm. it, it's kind of like like um, colors in a print you know it doesn't have to be all one solid color you know you can you can mix and match and still make it look good but you have to repeat and you have to repeat it um, you know what you yeah, right well yeah, I'm now just... no longer the star of this show I mean I <laughs> guarantee that after 21 years I'm, <laughs> I can just see it right now but if you have something that you'd like to showcase with us you can uh, email me at mike at letsfixerup.com. We've got some great shows with this, and let's get to it. Okay, I think I'm going to start here with the um, shutters. We looked at them from the outside, but I'll show you them from the inside. I have these on all of the windows. This is something that's very popular in Germany, <clears throat> as well as Europe. When it goes down all the way like that, you have complete privacy, and you can't push them up from the outside, so you have security. 
and you have insulation. There was the one day when Eddie and I left, we put a um, little thermometer in between the outside um, w of the window in, in that middle space, <clears throat> excuse me, and there was a 30 degree difference. So I love these things. They're manual. Um, you can get them electric, but it was 220, and Eddie would have had to convert everything. This up here is the sewing machine that I took apart, and um, <clears throat> excuse me, got it for five bucks at an auction, and uh, made a little wall decoration out of it. This here is another feature that I absolutely love. It's the pantry. It was made out of the wood that um, they sent the. Um, the shutters in from Germany, Eddie utilized all the wood here for the shelves and then trimmed it out. But these are a manageable depth. Um, when I went to do the design, I didn't want the 22 inches that I see a lot. Um, 12 inches seemed to be a little bit too short, so <clears throat> this is 15, 16 inches. These cabinet doors here, um, we were able to utilize different cabinets that we found here and there, flea markets, garage sales, um, uh, restores, um, outlets, because when we were living in Toledo, Eddie saw an ad in the newspaper for cabinet doors free, and he went and got them. He gave the guy 50 bucks. Turns out this guy had his kitchen done, and the guy that did it left all these cabinet doors in his garage, and he wouldn't get rid of them, and so um, he sent him a letter telling him to come and get them, and he never did, so then he was able to legally sell them off. But I did these cabinets here, um, put glass in them, and painted on the inside, and then if you look closely, you can see that these are actually different, different colors, but um, they're all the same style, and then we trimmed them out. The idea was to have a kitchen that looked like it developed over time, I don't like straight cabinets on the wall. I think it's kind of boring. Um, I kind of was going for like a French country look. And um, the slate back backsplash here fit in well with that. Just about everything in here is uh, recycled. This here is from St. Charles Hospital. That's where I met Eddie. Um, they redid the OB department. And when a company goes in there, and does a bid for a job that's, they bid all new. They don't reuse anything. So this was something that they were throwing away, the sink and the faucet, and we were able to utilize that. The countertop here is from the Marenzi School, that stainless steel. I had it um, refinished, and we were able to utilize that as well. This was actually a armoire that I used at my other house. I had clothes in there, but we put shelves in there. This is just absolutely perfect for the bowls. And then I have the, um, all the Tupperware that usually falls on your head. I have that down in there. And um, it's just, just really handy. Just makes everything real accessible. This here is the quarry tile. You can easily take a um, pot out of the oven and set it right on the countertop. You don't have to use hot pads anywhere in here. Got a nice little, um, pot filler here and got that at a supply house that was going out of business. This is uh, envy of all the women. <laughs> it's the spice cabinet. It's actually a medicine cabinet in its previous life and we put some of those doors on it. It's perfect. It's all alphabetized in alphabetical order <laughs> and uh, makes it real handy. You're not digging for any of your spices. The sink here is concrete. Eddie and I formed that up. Um, there's plywood on the bottom. Then we put two by fours here and we poured it in place. We researched this quite a bit before we actually did it. I got four books. Um, Chang is the number one um, innovator in concrete countertops and surfaces. And I got a couple of his books. He actually has different classes that he has throughout the country that will show people how to do it. But this, we Eddie and I formed up ourselves. I got some green tint and I tinted the sink in the counter just a little bit different, just for contrast. Um, and uh, we had a friend of ours who did 
commercial, you know, driveways and sidewalks and that type of thing for a living, we had him help us trowel it. Um, concrete is kind of funny because when it's wet, it kind of looks sm smooth and sleek, but the next day when it dried, it was bumpier than what I would have liked. So Eddie and I, um, we took a, I ordered a diamond sander. It has to be a wet orbital sander and had different diamond heads on it. And I ended up sanding this down a little bit so it would have smoother appearance. Had we troweled it a little bit more, um, it probably would have been okay. But the sink was formed up separately and that was formed up in the garage and we embedded um, some coins from our first trip to Europe from the different countries that we visited. I used this as a, um, this was a copy of a porcelain sink. I loved the dimensions and I just made it, you know, stick out a little bit. One of the things I like about this is that there's no lip. And with the concrete and the countertop in sink, it's extremely durable. You don't have to worry about spilling anything. You don't have to worry about, um, you know, breaking anything or scratching anything. It's just really, really durable. You do get some patina over time. You can see that there's some irregularities, you know, but um, mainly for maintenance, I just put beeswax on it and then, um, or mineral oil first and then beeswax. And I don't even do that like I should religiously. Struggling with the big box stores, choose Gladio. A hardware store, yet so much more. Your home improvement answer store. A place to design your interior space. A professional and friendly smiling face. Everything you need for your home. And Gladio is locally owned. Cleaning your gutters can be dangerous. Take it from Marty. For 30 years, I've been climbing up that ladder, cleaning out those gutters. One time, I leaned the ladder up there, and the feet were on the deck. The deck was a little wet. Next thing I know, the ladder kicks out, and I'm hanging by the gutter, and I start yelling for help. After that occurrence, I called Gutter Helmet. Call Gutter Helmet for an estimate. 419-475-0000. Get Gutter Helmet today, and you'll never clean your gutters again. Keeping you out of the gutter. You know, I hate talking toilets, but, you know, we, we really have to. I got a, a real quick story for you, folks. I, uh, I live in Wood County, and our, our water bills, if you live in Rossford or Wood County area, you know that the water bills are just beyond unbelievable. And, uh, and, and we, once again, you know, I had a $90 bill. And if I didn't pay that on a certain day, boy, they're coming right out to shut you off. Oh, yeah. I mean, they ain't messing around now, folks. Right. And if you live in Wood County, you know exactly what I'm talking about right now. And it just made me mad. But it also made me look at some things. And, and they did actually tell me about, uh, you know, uh, some of the problems you could be having. And, you know, you see a little leak in your toilet. But my God, that's going to cost you 30 bucks out of the $160, $170 a month bill. And so I said, it's time. So I started looking, and guess what I found? Some leaky toilets. That's a lot of money. Sure is. And, and it's, it's basically a very easy fix. And uh, we're going to fix it on, on the show here. And we came to uh, Gladio Do It Best. And uh, always, Lee, you've always got an answer for me. Well, we try to. Well, you know, and uh, if we get Jack Mo over here, he's going to show you something. I, I noticed one of the big differences, uh, you know, you, they, some of the bigger flapper setups and, and, and basically what I think we need, or, you know, it's just standard toilet, just a regular standard toilet, but instead of just fixing the flapper itself, which I think this would probably be the one that would be for me, Pretty which much. I could probably do, right. right? but I just decided, I think, hey, you know what, just be, do it the right way, and, and probably is this the all-in-one toilet repair kit? Yes, that repairs the whole inside of the tank. Everything. And from fill valve to overflow to flush valve. What what is the main problem? I mean it's these flappers go bad, is that what it is? The main problem is a flapper, which is Oh well, here we can show you right. Right, that's right. a flapper, it's right down here just before it exits the tank. Uh-huh. It will either get warped, get out of shape, build up with 
bunch of gunk. Well, if you use those blue chunks in your toilet to keep your water blue, right. I noticed that was, you know, all around my stuff. Right. That, that just, uh, it's a simple fix, but really. The, but the, the amount of water that goes through there, you just don't realize it. It's incredible. And, uh, and we had one that went bad uh, a while ago upstairs, and I fixed it. And I noticed a significant drop in my water bill. So I'm hoping I'll get another significant drop here, because I can't afford $150 a month water bills. Right. Well, what happens, I mean, once it leaks, it leaks 24 hours a day, sure. seven days a week. And your fill valve is going to be going on and off. Yep, yep. So if you hear your fill valve going on and off all the time, you know, it's probably a good idea. And this is not an expensive setup here. Right. Like 10, 15, 20 bucks or 10 bucks, you know, whatever it is. It's not, it's well right. worth it. The simplest, simplest solution is to just replace the flapper, which is very simple. They there either you. will go on sliding over the overfill tube or you cut the center out and it hooks onto two little ears and you hook your chain up to your lever and you're done. Yeah, it makes it a real easy fix. We're gonna, we are gonna do the harder fix because that's me, Lee. You know uh -huh. that. And uh, I think this is something that's gonna save us a little bit of money. And, uh, and <laughs> in this day and age, boy, I'm telling you, water almost costs as much as gasoline does right well, now. Well, not quite, but it's, boy, getting, it's there. getting there. <laughs> it's getting there. Well, we've got our unit. We're all ready to go with it, and I uh, appreciate you spending some time with us uh -huh. here. And, uh, you know, now that the water, uh, you know, you want to save that water so you can water your lawns. Well, yeah. That ain't going to happen in my house. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting, I'm getting goats. And then I'm just gonna let the goats roam if uh, the mayor lets me in. Uh, so I, don't I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> Lee, once again, thank you for some right, time. Jim, and, yeah. uh, Gladio Home Centers and Gladio Do It Best right out here on Navarre Avenue in Oregon. Uh, boy, I'll tell you what, whatever you need, they've got it out here. And I call them, I always have a project and you guys can always take care of me. Yeah, we try to help people, try to save them a few dollars one way or the other, either through service or through their savings on their water bill. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, it's amazing how much one change will will affect your water bill now. That and also a dripping faucet is just as bad. Exactly, exactly. So just those are the things you want to do right now because I know you're getting shell shocked with your water payments, and I know I did, and I'm still mad about it. And uh, but I still have water, so I'm a very happy man.